into the technology that they can use it. So a good example of how we try to pull that together. It's all about using from day one. So due diligence all the way through, and this is a bit of a presentation we often talk about with the sales and marketing teams, because traditionally the sales and marketing teams struggle at the end, short timelines, small budgets, et cetera, et cetera. What we try to do, there's time, process, and cost. With this technology, like any enabling technology, use it from day one, reduce the time and cost, and at the end of the day, it is the property industry, it's about making money. You know, and creating good outcomes. And whether it's public money, or whether it's private money, it's about, if it's public money, it's about reducing how much money you've got to spend. If it's private money, it's about making as much money as you can. That's the reality of it. And then from a sales and marketing point of view, or communication point of view, trying to get collateral all the way along in real time, which we'll show you in a moment. So at the end of the game, two things happen, and this is happens more and more, that they've got more pre-sales out of the way, so they don't have to spend as much, or they can take the same amount of spend and just spend it in a better way. But it's about saving time, costs, and process. So, thank you. We're gonna get into some Going to get into some, um, going to get into some, time wise, Steve, yeah. going to get into some demonstrations because I mean, all that's good talk. We just need to show you what it is. So, you know, traditionally, you know, as an urban planner, and, and we'd all be part of this, you know, the amount of times that we go for a site, site meeting or we'd have a meeting with a consultant, there'd be 15 planners or 15 consultants around the room, particularly if there's some from the state, there'd be thousands of dollars spent on airfares, site visits, all those sorts of things. Obviously, going to site and understanding the site is very, very important. But for a client to be able to have a have a team meeting without having to go to site, so they understand things, or actually bringing people in and all bringing people into a process to help understand what the site features are without having to go to site is quite interesting. So the first thing for my mind when I started this journey is to imagine if we can actually go and do a site inspection without going to site, you know, to some extent. And this is just an example of a project we're doing down in Melbourne for for Intrapac, who we're doing a lot of work with. Um, uh, this is probably the fourth iteration of this project, and again, this is where it's a business tool. We use it when it's required. So this is the fourth iteration. Uh, this particular journey was about looking at some density change uh, and helping council and community understand the density change. But what Rico's doing, and what we try to do, is just take whatever information's out there. So this is based on a bit of Google overview. I'm actually going to hand over to Rico now. And what I love about this, Rico's not from the property industry. He's in national business. He's a wonderful German. But it's an example of how anyone, you know, without any, you know, yeah. true knowledge of the property industry, can understand this because this is the empowering of this tool is that I now can hand this to anyone that understands how to use the tool and off they go. They don't need me. All of our clients now have these laptops and they go to council meetings, they go to stakeholder meetings by themselves with a laptop. Whilst they obviously still need consultants, of course they do, but it's empowering for them to go and do this themselves. It changes the conversations they have, to be honest. Sorry, mate. Oh, they do have the plan. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's, it's, a, good thing. it's a good thing. Um, to have someone like me that doesn't know what this means, right? Um, I have a broad understanding of what a contour line is and all of these things, but this is how things are communicated, and I've seen it many times now. Um, creating wonderful 3D spaces, flattening it down into something like this, and then writing about it or talking about it, having a lot of argy-bargy trying to get it across the line. Um, so in this day and age, what we can do um, with gaming engines, like we're using here, is actually just uh, turning it all into a 3D experience um, which bridges the gap between all the wonderful technical people and many of the non-technical people that have a say, have issues with something or in the end uh, are even able to make the decisions. Um, so what we got here is um, a site down in Turkey and um, I'll quickly run you through some of the um, standard interactions. So basically in aerial mode we have the ability to look around the site um, the site here is accurate as per the information we have and around it it's just Google Maps so it could be near maps or whatever it is. So we'll take whatever's out there and bring it together. Um, we've got these regional tags here so you can see how that helps tell the story um, of the surrounding assets. We can layer over that any plan, any 2D information and talk about it. So here just the, the growth corridor and just telling the story of, of how that site here feeds into the surroundings. Information. Any information that's currently there, we can ladder into it, and we tailor this to suit the business needs. So every job, we start to understand the, the business requirements, then we tailor this user interaction to suit that. Sorry, so, for example, here, slope analysis, whatever it may be. But really simply speaking, we can go to site without going to site, so uh, you don't have to fly 10 people out there to walk around. We can be on the ground, we can use our virtual drone to fly around. Um, so this is all about actually a decision-making tool that you can use in the boardroom or just on your PC. Every member of the team can use this to create a better outcome um, and communicate the outcomes in the end. And what I love about it, because it's gaming technology, all you, need, all you need to do is mouse and keyboard, game control and touchscreen. 
you don't know how, you know, one of the challenges I used to have back in visualization days is I didn't know how to use CAD. I couldn't use 3D Max. I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. Boy, it was complicated for me sometimes. Here, I can do almost do everything myself because it's a gaming engine. And there, it's about making things simple. It's fully executable. We just email this to you, download it, off you go. Um, it's a bit cropped out, but in this menu here, can now bring on um, one 12D road layout. So again, the ability to go down to the street, even crudely like this, and drive down the street. Um, it, it is basically um, a game changer in the sense of interacting as a non-technical person with information at a point in time that normally wouldn't allow for that. Um, and the important thing there is that we've simply taken the 12D plans that what my versions have put together that other than people like virtuals, not many people understand, <laughs> you know, and put it into something that everyone understands. So that's the, a, an example where the investment of the 12D, which is important, we need it, and that serves its purpose, but then it goes into a platform that everyone can understand. The landscape architect, the, the, uh, the urban designer, everyone can use that for the local community. So this one here is actually about uh, different density options. So if I uh, bring on this, uh, this plan here and go to the other alternative, you can see um, the difference in density. So this is a discussion um, with council around um, making that happen at a higher density. Now if I turn that off, we can layer on our trees, grayscale houses, <coughs> and that then again gives us the ability to go down um, to the ground and say experience these parklands and green spaces here. And even look across here, um, across the green space and, and looking at the, uh, at the um, lower density option and again at the higher density option, really just visual. You don't have to read any plans. It's, you don't have to do any interpretation really. I think, sorry, the other really interesting thing is that as planners, as designers, we live in this, this 2D plan space. So good examples. The reality is we experience life on the ground. And so this here is about visual impact of what density means. Not what it looks like on a 2D plan, but what it looks like on ground. And that was a good example of Nico Rico just going between the two density options. It was almost no visual impact on the ground. It might look a little bit different from the air, but on the ground it's, it's, it's almost ne neg negligible. Now there's other things like that developer, for example, is happy to pay for a beautiful community center if there's a higher density option. Um, and as I've just dropped that in, we could drop in any design, any options, and just experience them in the space. <coughs>